pledge? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I need a, a motion to approve the agenda. Moved by Romano, supported by Leonetti. Please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Motion to approve the minutes of the Finance Committee dated November 28, 2018. Moved by Gillette, supported by Sauger. Please vote. I'm going to assume, okay, here we go. The motion passes 12 to 0. Uh, motion to approve the Health and Human Service Committee uh, minutes dated December 3rd, 2018. Moves, moved by Carabelli, supported by Duge. Please vote. Okay, motion passes. Justice and Public Safety Committee dated December 5th, 2018. Moved by Duje, supported by Gillette. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to zero. Government Operations Committee dated December 6th, 2018. Moved by Kraft, support by Carabelli. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee dated December 10, 2018. Moved by Carabelli, support by Lucido. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Okay, public participation. Does anyone wish to be heard? Anyone wish to be heard? Seeing none, we'll close public participation. Just hold on just a second. Are there two of them that? Sorry, department recommendations, budget amendment, sheriff overtime from fund balance, 786,986. Is there a motion to move by Sager, support by Lucido? This one's probably. I don't see anybody seeking any questions. Okay, please vote. I'm waiting for the window. Okay. Oh. Did he write? Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but I didn't pass the vote, I thought. Um, um, okay, amended 2018 Macomb County apportionment report. First, to uh, see a motion by Leonetti, support by Kraft. I do not see any questions. Please vote. Did you figure out the one people voted in? Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the motion passes 12 to 0. All right, here's where we have to do some housekeeping. There was. 
Commissioner Toko voted no on something in committee, and I believe, was it Commissioner Gillette that voted with her? Or did you guys know which item that was? We need to pull some items out. That was, I believe, the business process and development committee. And the uh, land grant uh, commission? Oh, that's it. Yeah, that one was Okay. The C. Okay, so, so on, um, um, on Health and Human Service Committee recommendations. Okay, motion to approve a the budget amendment. Support, motion by Duje, support by Leonetti. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to zero. I'm going to seek a motion for 8, B, C, and D. Um, moved by Romano, support by Lacido. Any questions? Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0, and now I'll return to A, which is the agreements with uh, Sterling Heights, Mount Clemens, East Point, um, and Warren Animal Control. Uh, is there a motion? Moved by Duje, supported by Sager. Um, this is for my no vote, but I just want to clarify something. It's my understanding, and I didn't say it correctly that everybody else would understand. So set aside East Point if you take. If you take Sterling Heights Animal Agreement that we're voting on today, and you look at Frazier's, I believe Frazier doesn't pay for any of these things we are voting for, for Sterling Heights, Warren, East Point. And I don't believe Frazier's the only one. Um, I just believe that that's an example. So that's what I was trying to convey when it was very confusing in committee. Anyway, um, please vote. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Commissioner Smith. So can I ask the, uh, Steve about what uh, Commissioner Kleinfeld's saying? Do, are we providing ser some services to, to some of the communities without a contract, and then other communities were actually charging them for the same? Hmm, sorry, my elf just died. Um, uh, I believe that may be the case, but I don't know conclusively. I'd have to he was, he was supposed to ask and he forgot to get yeah. with him. Um, we know that the animal control officers are being provided, but I believe the contracts we, we voted on that are in front of us today, I believe those fees are also not being um, charged to some communities. And Steve's under the impression that I'm correct on that. He's going to verify it for sure. Mm -hmm. But he, he also believes that. And by the way, None of these, uh, these communities haven't seen these, so um, they're going to see them after we vote on them. Is that something then, I, I'm guessing I still have the floor, is that something you're going to look into? I mean, as our finance director, you'd want to, yeah, just like I'm, us, get everybody yeah, at least paying their equal my share. My task is to follow up with Jeff through the exec's office to figure mm -hmm. that out. Okay. So I, don't, I mean, listen, I'm for helping in, at the best cost we can, but right. not... I you understand. Know, when we're yeah. charging one and not another, so. Right. Uh, okay. okay, Commissioner thank you. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> I, I'm going to vote yes for these. I'm, I'm going to just defer to, to the chairperson. You're voting no. Is that because you don't agree with the contracts or you don't agree with the idea that some municipalities are, are getting it for free at this um, time? Uh, I'm voting no because others, other, others are getting it for free. I believe these communities are going to vote for these. They don't have a choice. They need to be able to use animal control. Um, um, I know that they're upset about it. I know that the city manager in East Point <coughs> spoke out about that today at an uh, economic meeting that there was. There are a lot of people upset about it. But I, th but I believe they're going to approve these. They just think the other communities should also have to pay. Well, okay, so let's assume that we vote for these. I assume we're going to track down these other communities and get them into contracts, right? That would be the plan. It's a little more complicated than that. The, the, the position of animal control is if 
if a community has an existing animal control ordinance and an existing animal control, then anything they do with the county, they pay for. If a community never had that, and they've been getting it for free, they continue to get it for free. If one of these communities got rid of their animal control and animal control ordinance, his position is they, they would still have to pay for these services even though the other communities aren't paying for these services. My position is if you look at the, there are a number of things like this, this isn't the only one, but if you look at it, it looks like the South End is um, subsidizing um, a whole lot of other communities, what they're getting out of Macomb County. Okay, so. all right, all right, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Lucido. My, my question is for Steve. Um, I know when um, Mr. Randazzo was here, he seemed kind of very unsure of who would have the authority to make this equal. Do you think it's the exec's office? They I, would I would think it's the exec's office. Okay. So th this whole conversation involves right another layer of folks. Okay, well, I think if we could look into that, just, I think all of us. Duly noted. Agree. Thank you. Yeah, and I think he's, he may be aware of it because my understanding is the city manager brought it up, he was present when he, when he brought up that he has an issue with it. <laughs> Commissioner, Commissioner uh, Hackle, Commissioner um, Brown. Thank you, the community is that paying additional fees for services provided by Macomb County Animal Shelter have their own animal control department, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm asking the question. I've that, well, East Point didn't have any animal control. They just had the ordinance, but they once had animal control. Now, they, now they're having to get it again because, um, because they didn't have any and they couldn't work with the county on a contract. So they've got their own animal control again. Um, these services they've always paid for and they continue to pay for. So they, they just want certain certain services from Macomb County. They don't want all the animal control services provided by Macomb County Animal Control. They just want certain services. Oh. So they're no, paying I'm for not those certain speak services. For them on that. Um, I, I think it depends on who you talk to, but no, I think I think some of them feel, hey, if we got rid of our animal control and our animal control ordinance, the county should provide the same thing they're providing for Fraser and Clinton Township, and um, and others are like, well, a little more like, look, if we can't have that, if we have to pay for our animal control officer, these things that we're paying for, that we're voting on tonight for those communities, the other communities ought to at least pay for those things. S and S Steve's not 100% sure because he forgot to check with Randazzo on that. But he believes that those communities don't pay for the things that are in front of us for these four communities. Mm -hmm. So uh, the position is if you ever had animal control, then you cannot have the services for free from Macomb County. But if you always had Macomb County for free, then you continue to get it for free. Well, it's part of the tax dollars you pay for your, your county government, so maybe that's part of it, too, that goes back to the historical things that we've always provided as a, as a you know. Correct. We need to have a whole, whole discussion that needs to be had about in a more organized fashion than what we have every day. I mean, with some more information about all the communities that are in, have an animal control, who's paying, what's not. And well, if you in your community were dealing with people as upset as the people that are in my community, you would have raised the issue as well. If that was, you had to, you had to have the fight when they were trying to cut the sheriff's patrol in your area. Yeah. This, I'm in the hornet's nest on this one and I'm defending my district. I, I gotcha. Okay, um, I don't see any other speakers, please vote. And Steve is gonna get with us once and for all on, on the answer to that question. Motion passes nine to three with uh, Commissioners Romano, Kleinfeld, and Drillette voting no. Okay, so on to um, government operations. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, go let ahead. Let me back up, just to let you know, um, I do have a call in with uh, Vicki Wolber. She's called me back, so we're playing phone tag as we speak. So just back on my radar a little 
more clarified or clearer than it was before. So. Okay, thank you. All right, so the next one is Government Operations Committee Recommendation A for outside counsel. Is there a motion? M motion by Leonetti, is there support? Support by Kraft. I see no speakers. Please vote. Motion passes 9-3. Oh, I'm sorry, motion passes 12 to 0. Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee recommendations A, B, D, and E, we're pulling C out. Is there a motion for those four? M moved by Brown, supported by Duge. Are there any questions on any of those? Please vote. Motion passes 13 to 0. Okay, item C, which is the IT um, Smart Bench project. And just since you walked in, Kathy, I wanted to remind you, you voted no in committee, and that's why I pulled this one out. So I just wanted to remind you of that. Um, is there a motion? I, I don't remember who else did. I think so. Uh, moved by Kraft. Is there support? Support by Duge? Any, um, Steve was going to, you were going to speak to this one, weren't you? Was there, you said there were questions? Yeah, I mean, uh, the history of this was a little bit of an odd project, but so it was approved in the late summer, early fall of 2017 for 64000 The money was never transferred from the general fund to the capital projects fund to fund this project. It was, d there were some delays, I think, contractually with this project, so it didn't get started until the middle of this year. So we now have bills to pay. Um, again, there was, the money was never funded to begin with. So um, we've corrected this going forward. As you know, we've been pretty adamant that going forward we should fund projects in their entirety when they're approved and the contracts are approved to avoid this kind of thing. So I think going forward we've got this kind of problem fixed. There was not, none of that carry forward money that we've talked about several times, the 12 million, none of that was identified for this project. So it's not as if we swapped out dollars for dollars. Okay, I think what the question was, was <coughs> this was in the 2017. It was in 17. And, and, and we voted on the contract in 17. Correct, and we so never the money funded that, it. So the money that was in the 17 budget for which we voted on that contract, where did that money go? Did it end up back in the general fund? Did it Basically, end up yes. being used for another project? Yeah, we would have ended back in the general fund. So, yeah, we did swap it out for another project. Again, we didn't have bills to pay, so we didn't have any cash needs at the time, which is kind of getting back to the point of funding things when we approve them so we don't have to worry about this kind of thing. Okay, Commissioner, <coughs> Chair Smith. Not sure if I should do this. I, I, I had to miss a few meetings, and we buzzed through a couple of things early that I don't know if anyone else has questions on because I assume that everybody discussed something. And this is, this will, I'll talk to you about it later, Steve, if we need to. But the overtime sheriff department, $786,000 from fund ballots, was that discussed at any of our meetings as to what the, I mean, we kind of breezed through that and I just assumed I missed the discussion on that. But we didn't, and I, I hate to, I mean, I don't, you're, you're the He said fund. that it was discussed at a, at a budget meeting, and I thought that was the meeting that I missed uh, in the summer. That was the one budget meeting that I missed. I, so. I would say that Jim, oh. during the course of other presentations, when I presented the forecast um, maybe six weeks ago for year end, mm. I talked about uh, this, and that this would be coming forward I, I was estimating 1.1 million at the time. So my, my, the only question I really have on it is, is this something that was anticipated and brought up in the budget review and this is something that was part of? You're right, we're adjusting uh, 18 to be more reflective of action, just on okay. the budget. So I've already accounted for it in the forecast. Mm -hmm. So when I was here five or six weeks ago indicating we were gonna run 
maybe a surplus of four point four sure. to four and a half million, I'll call it. This had already been accounted for. Okay. So but that that we just has not changed. Actually acted on it yet. We're, uh, budgetarily, but we, we haven't acted on it. Okay. Right. All right. I just wanted to be clear because I exactly I, I talked to Veronica and I thought right. I didn't want to miss gloss over that. Yep. Other than that, I, I understand your explanation on the um, 2017 issue. It's you just you used to actually put it in the, the money in when for a for a few years we've been funding things on a cash flow basis. That's why mm -hmm. starting this year and going forward, we, it's pr more prudent to revert back to what best practice is, which is fund things at the time they're approved. And you don't have to right. And, and we're also going into you know, project by project actually approving Correct. where before exactly. we were kind of in a right. big list of, you know, projects. So I think this one was delayed six or seven months. It, sure. You know, it's kind of fell off the radar a little bit too. Okay. So that, that's fine. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Getting back to the smart bench project, Commissioner Romano. Okay. I don't see any other speakers. Please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. I'm sorry. I'm still looking at the old screen. Motion passes 11 to 2 with Commissioner Toko and Commissioner Gillette voting no. Okay, so that's infrastructure and economic development, and we are down to new business. Does anyone have new business? Let me call on uh, Commissioner Leonetti first. Thank you, Madam Chair. A little new business. I went down to SEMCOG yesterday. Uh, I think some of you know Commissioner Kraft and I were involved in SEMCOG's a project for a real-time monitoring system for Lake Saint, the Lake St. Clair, Lake St. Clair River, uh, and Detroit River corridor. There's 14 water intake stations that run from Port Huron all the way down to Monroe. Uh, and what happened was uh, Candace Miller, to her credit, gave Phil Kraft and I a little lead when we heard that uh, SEMCOG was going to get $375,000 to re-implement this real-time monitoring system. Uh, Commissioner Kraft and I got involved and got a company called ECT that was involved in this 10, 15 years ago. They jumped on board with SEMCOG, and uh, the, the SEMCOG's been working this up for the last six months. Um, and the, the goal was to have these 14 water intake stations have a real-time water monitoring system. That way we could avoid things like a Flint crisis. And Commissioner Kraft and I actually went up to Marysville because the gentleman there that runs that plant is like the Cadillac of water intake systems. He does an excellent job. He's, he's, he, he's really good. He's really on top of the things. He's really diligent. And so SEMCOG kind of used his model as an approach for all these other uh, intake stations. Now, I'll make this real quick. The reason why this failed 15 years ago, <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, Bob's giving me this look. The reason why this failed 15 years ago is because they had this system in place. They had this real-time monitoring system in place, but these communities that had the intake stations didn't pay for the upkeep. And as a result, one by one, they just shut down because of lack of funding because nobody wanted to keep up with the upkeep. So this time it was very clear that if any of these communities got this intake station, they would have to sign a contract to agree to have a maintenance fee paid for, and it's only a $4,000 a year maintenance fee. That's it, $4,000 to protect your water. And what they did is they all got these communities to agree, with the exception of Port Huron, they're still on coming on board, there's just a little delay there, but they got them all to agree to sign these five-year maintenance agreements. And so yesterday's meeting was kind of the, the end of this, uh, well, it's been about a six or seven month project. But the big concern was to get these communities to sign these agreements, and I'm happy to say that uh, uh, SEMCOG was able to do that. But this was a great example of good government again. You got a coalition of different, the governor gave the uh, grant money, uh, SEMCOG jumped on it. Uh, you know, we locally tried to do what we can, Commissioner Kraft and I. Candace Miller gave us some help in doing stuff. We had private donations come in, and we had all these communities decide to pitch in and do what's right for Southeast Michigan. So I went to the meeting yesterday. It was a, it was a great meeting to see the, uh, the final result of this project. It should be online sometime early next year. And, uh, you know, if any of you ever want to go to the Marysville Water Treatment Center, you know, to see a really good uh, uh, system in place, you know, give me a call. Mount Clemens is going to have it. And so we should be protected here in southeast Michigan from any kind of crises like Flint. 
So I thought I'd share that with you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Did you want to? Okay. Um, Steve, would you very quickly, could you, would you mind giving us an update on uh, the community mental health meeting that you were at that caused you? It's a very brief update. Um, they are still indicating, yes, that they are going to uh, run a deficit of somewhere between 10 or $12 million, probably more in the neighborhood of 10. They're estimating they're going to have about $4 million of fund balance remaining at the end of 2018. Their fiscal year end is September 30th. Takes them a little bit of time to close out their books, so it'll be another month or two probably before we know for sure how much is left. Uh, but they are indicating somewhere around uh, $4 million. John Kinch also has indicated that they're still looking at another nine or $10 million deficit if things are not corrected for 2019. Does so he understand that w we can't cover them? Yes. <laughs> so there's uh, more discussions that need to be had for sure because if they start out with four, I mean, easy math, four minus nine is minus five. So, you know, uh, so whether they come back and ask for a one-time appropriation of five million, I, I don't know. There, there are a lot further discussions. Oh. We need to bring the new executive director into the loop. Um, I think, you know, the mental health board has some conversations that need to be had too, but it's, it's anyway, that it was real okay. basic. Um, I need clarification on what you mean by corrected because you're talking about this is a st systemic problem. So at this there have to be changes made in the, because if they come to us for a one-time allocation, then next year, oops, we're, we got, we're gonna be 10 million short again. As it appears, yeah. I, I agree with you that, you know, there are systemic issues and its appearance. That there would appear to be systemic problems, and I don't, you know, Commissioner Kraft sits on the mental health board, so he's aware. So there's some things that need to take place quickly, very S quickly. Chair Smith. Steve, do, do, I mean, is there any talk about anybody from the board being included in these conversations that deeply affect the budget that we're uh, responsible for? I mean, do you have you talked to them? I'd really like to, uh, you know, uh, offer. I, I mean, not that we have any help, but it certainly would be nice to hear what's going on here and being able, you know, be a, a, a part of at least sitting down and hearing what's go what's going on firsthand. Yeah, I think so. I think we need to figure out where we think we need to go in the first place. But I think the idea was to bring the board into the loop for sure. I mean, it, this has a potential, you know, long-term impact on the county. I guess services. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, one year you might be able to appropriate some money, but it's systemic. It, it appears to be systemic, and I'm not sure if it's what changes need to be made. So, Commissioner Toko. Steve, does this deficit put us in that risk corridor that the state may um, stop our end our contract? And, and what happens? It's possible. Uh, I don't. You know, um, John. We talked about that the other day, and John was not sure what the board or what the state would do, but. The, the the four million that remains, I believe, is would be in that risk corridor fund or the risk reserve fund, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it's possible. I don't know what the state would do if so we could, if we didn't have that seven and a half percent set aside. So my understanding when I was on on CMH was as if we didn't have that money set aside, that the state could come in, and I think there was another CMH that this happened to. I think it was was it Lakeshore Commissioner Kraft. And so what does that mean for the budget at the county if, if that were to happen? I mean, do, do we have a contingency plan? Right now, no. We don't know what the extent of the, what that would look like. So you're talking about the state stepping in and discontinuing the PIP contract, I believe, would be. Right, so if the state comes in and right. says we're, we're, you're no, we're no longer going to be a PIHP, we, yeah, we didn't get that far into the discussion the other day. That's we're we're having another discussion next week, I think. So, you, Commissioner Kraft, you, is there anything you can add on that? I mean, not to put you on the spot, but is there anything you? Because, <coughs> you know, two years ago this was a big problem, and 
we were supposed to be cutting CLS services. Were those cut? We have been making cuts and we made more cuts. The problem is we're not making enough cuts. We're, what we're required to do by law is what's medically necessary. And what Macomb County has been doing for years is going over and above to provide excellent service, which we have. We've been the beacon of community mental health. The problem is now it's kind of coming back to bite us. And the state has been rebasing a lot of things and we've been losing a lot of money through that. So the cuts that we've been making haven't been enough, I guess, is where we're at right now. I think where this is going is we're the ones who appoint them and they just can't pull the trigger. I think we're gonna have a problem with that. Are you, I just have one more question though, if I still have the floor. Has the UBHC been shut down now, closed, and, and is that done? I don't know, I guess. Okay. It's been closed for a couple months, and how does has, has that made any adjustment to the budget? I mean, I know that we had put a lot of money into that. Th that's part of the whole conversation. I, I don't, I can't comment on that one individually. I don't know what the budget for it is off the top of my head. And I'm not sure. That, what that's one component of a big change, I believe, that I believe needs to happen. Right, and I'm not sure what that number is either. One of the <coughs> other things we did was respite care cuts. We cut 35%, which is amounts to $4 million, but that's money we won't realize for a year because it's when their you know contracts basically run out. That's when that money's realized. So money's starting to trickle in, but it's not fast enough and it's not enough. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Caraballi. Thank you, Madam Chair. Real quick, they didn't have enough money in the reserves. The county obligated, we told them they can't spend it, that we would authorize X amount of dollars for the reserves. My question for you today, did they spend that money that we put in for their reserves? Most of it. You're talking about, I call it, they call it the ISF, I call it the risk, res risk corridor the risk fund. Yes. The risk reserve fund. They're estimating that they'll have about $4 million left in that fund at the end of 2018. That's the formula. So my question for you, I believe, how much did we, no, I think we, it was four or five? What did, what did the board? We, we pro, the general fund contributes, for all intents and purposes, oh, $4 million to Mr. mental health. Yeah, none of it. Bear with me one minute. Let me make this really clear. There is a responsibility by law that we had to contribute to get the match money. I'm not talking about that. It's not the little bit of money that we authorize for certain programs the board authorized. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about we authorized because they didn't receive as much money from Lansing as they thought they were gonna go on a second round, not originally, but they were petitioning Lansing for X amount of dollars. They didn't get what they wanted. The board, if I'm not mistaken, authorized money for the reserves or however you wanted to call that, that fund so that they're within that threshold. Did they spend the money we gave and told them not to I spend? I don't remember us appropriating money for that risk reserve fund. Not a problem, we'll have to, Crystal, we're gonna right. go back to our All right, our so between the two of you, we gotta right. figure I, that I, one out. My understanding is the money we give them is our 10% match on other programs and nothing over and above. What's that? I think, yeah, will you will you give them a call because I yeah, think. Yeah, I, I may just not, re I may not be remembering when we actually authorized additional funds, but. Okay, all right, are you? Yeah, no, I still have people In lined up In recent years, speak. Commissioner? Commissioner Carabelli, are you? Okay, Commissioner Duge. Uh Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I think what, uh, we have to put the full faith and credit of the county behind funds in order to back up for this reserve fund. And uh, that is down to four million. I don't know how much it was that we promised that we'd uh, put the full faith and credit of the county behind, but it was, it was a number, was it four or five million, either way. Um, after everything's said and done, I think a lot of the problems that are coming out of uh, mental health uh, have to do with, we haven't cut enough, we haven't cut enough uh, quickly. Uh, we've done a great, the, the department has done a terrific job for the people that we represent that have problems, but we couldn't keep going this way. The, if I'm not mistaken, the state cut us $38 million. It was either 32 or 38. Um, I was at a number of meetings that uh, we were promised a, ver a variety of millions of dollars in order to bring everything to zero, and that never happened. 
So with the new legislation in, in uh, Lansing and with a new director, and it, it may possibly take having new people on uh, community mental health board. But uh, this has been a mess that's been festering for a while and we just haven't been able to cut it. So um, uh, Commissioner Kraft, I don't envy you your position um, as a representative of this board on that board, but uh, your knowledge and your background on all this is gonna help all of us go forward. Thank you, Madam Chair. Commissioner Leonetti. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Steve, uh, I don't know if you know, when you had those budget meetings that, uh, you know, with, with Kinch recently about the situation, I mean, there was a lot of lobbying last year in Lansing, and maybe you can answer this one too, Commissioner Kraft. I know when we were short, there was a lot of people, our legislators went to bat, and everybody went to bat trying to get us some extra money here to, to fill that gap. <clears throat> was our lobbyist, do you know, from, was it CSI? Geez, there you go, I'll get her. CSI is the TV show, right? <laughs> do you know if our lobbyist has been contacted on this? I don't know, I do you don't not know. know that. I believe it was a number one priority of theirs. Okay. Was it, do you know Commissioner yeah, Kraft? If I could chime in, and, and when Gary was here this most recent time, he said for this supplemental, they were trying for 500,000 to a million, but that's that would be the most, if anything. And what about our legislators, some of our new ones that are in there and some of the ones who got reelected? Are they put on notice as of this point? Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you, Chair Smith. We're done. Is, does anybody else have any new business? Yes. Chair Smith. I have a microphone. I have a tribute that I would like to uh, present. Um, well, actually, I believe uh, Commissioner Lacido, I think you might be presenting. So the Macomb County Board of Commissioners extends their congratulations and best wishes to our legislative director, Crystal Brenner, in her celebration of her 40th birthday. Tomorrow. Crystal began her career with the uh, Corporation Council. She accepted promotion to the clerk's office, and then she got her job of a lifetime here at the board in 2016. Hi, Crystal. Well, well I am kind of reading from it right now, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> so I will finish with, uh, what's that? Yes, please go down there. Uh, listen, Crystal's devotion to her career, the Macomb County community and her family and friends are qualities worthy of recognition and provide an excellent example for all of those who have uh, come to know and admire her. It's an honor to reflect on these accompli accomplishments and wish Crystal a happy 40th birthday. And come on up. And I think we have sprinklers so you can light all 40 candles if you want. <laughs> <laughs> and who's starting the singing up there? One of you? No, one of you guys are starting it. Let's go. Happy to you. Too. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Crystal. Happy birthday to you. All right. <laughs> Okay, seeing no other new business, is there uh, public participation? Does anyone wish to be heard? Seeing, no, seeing none, we'll close public participation. Motion to adjourn by Duje, support by Gillette, please vote. We are adjourned. <laughs>